These are Antarctic krill, Euphorsia superba, one of the most abundant animal species on the earth. We think there are up to 500 million tons of these swimming around the Southern Ocean. That's about the same weight as all of the cattle and cows on earth, or all of the humans. So an enormous biomass of one gram animals. And this is a single species, and a species that's relied upon by whales and seals and penguins to be there in vast numbers so that they can survive and complete their life cycle. They're a critical step in the Southern Ocean food chain. The environment that Antarctic krill live in is now changing very rapidly. The combined effects of temperature increase from climate change and ocean acidification, all of this carbon dioxide in the atmosphere dissolving in to create a, a pH that is more acidic than what krill evolved in, all have an effect on krill and the ecosystem. The warming of the habitat has a fundamental effect on sea ice. We predict that if we do nothing to slow our carbon dioxide emissions, that the sea ice will reduce. Krill are integrally related with sea ice. Their larvae rely on sea ice for protection as a nursery habitat when they're going through the six month larval phase. The sea ice defines much of the habitat of Antarctic krill. The wet well is effectively a way of getting a sample of water into a ship without using a pump because the pump will damage the fragile marine life you're trying to collect. So what we've done is put the wet well below the waterline of the ship. It's down inside the engine room. Pipes connect the outside world, the underwater world, to the wet well. There are three of them, one at the keel, one just a metre below the surface and one sort of midway between them. They're 125 millimetres in diameter, that's so about that sort of size. And when you open the hydraulic valve on them, the ship starts to sink. So water floods into that room. So krill are hard to study in winter because of the sea ice. So in summer we're able to get to Antarctica and study krill using sound and also collecting krill by trawling. In winter we can't do that because of the ice. So the combi enables us to study krill all year round, including that seafloor habitat. In the dark, when krill are up at the surface, often feeding at night time, they are swimming in a haphazard arrangement, trying to catch phytoplankton in their front legs. But when threatened in light, they need to form a school. And the school is when they all line up and swim exactly the same way. And it dazzles visual predators like seals and penguins, fish and squid. It's a great way of confusing the neurosystem of these predators, so it's hard to select an individual target. So this is the main frame of the swarm study system. This is a, a frame that we'll try and drop right into the middle of a krill school as the vessel goes over the top. This is actually quite a difficult thing to do. 
depending on the size of the swarm. If we hit a super swarm, which can be up to a nautical mile across, then you can't really miss. But the challenge is to drop it in and then film the krill schooling around with these stereo cameras, which are mounted on these plates. This will give us an idea of how krill orientate themselves in schools, understanding how krill form schools of krill and how they orientate is really key to better understanding how we can predict the biomass using sound from vessels going over the top to bounce information back to tell us how much krill is there.